I'm here with Linda Baumgarten of Williamsburg, and we're in a very special place, aren't we? We are, yes. And, and I want to thank you for inviting Love of Quilting here. Tell me where we are. Well, we are in the textile storage area. It's a behind-the-scenes facility that also houses conservation labs and has storage for the quilts and coverlets. Let me show you a few of these examples. Ooh, ooh, ooh twist have, my arm. <laughs> uh, trays that are 9 by 11 feet in size so that a quilt such as this Baltimore album quilt, oh. which is a stunning example. This example can lay out flat without any oh. wrinkles or folds so that we can really make it available for easy study if we're cataloging the piece or planning an exhibition. And all of these textiles eventually rotate onto exhibit and when they're off exhibit, they come back to this climate controlled facility. And also, isn't leaving them flat the best way to store the quilt? Yes, it doesn't put any stress on the piece from hanging or folds or being uh, crushed in a box. So mm -hmm. that it's a really a wonderful storage method. And these trays, although they're large, are light enough for two staff members of our size to lift them and to pull them out. Oh, the whole tray? The whole tray, oh, wow. yes. What a quilt. Oh. This is a wonderful example. Oh. I like the way the rainbow print in this uh, brown vase, uh, they've used the highlights in the print to make the vase look like it's three-dimensional. Yeah, it gives it the contour. And then the quilter has also given additional stuffing in the flowers to raise them off the surface. Yes. Let me show you a few other pieces on the trays. Okay. There's one down here in which we've put three about mid-19th oh, century quilts. Look at these. Of these wonderful <laughs> sort of brown ground yes. textiles and the, the lovely pinks. Uh, this one is a particularly interesting one. You'll recognize it as flying geese pattern. Yes, and I love the paisley fabric. Yes, the, the paisley is a wonderful yeah, textile. Yeah, it's beautiful fabrics in there. This one is, is uh, the family history is that it was started by a young girl in the 1840s, uh, but it looks like from some of the textiles, she may have finished it later because some of the textiles <laughs> go later than the 1840s. We know all about that. Yes, and many quilters do. Uh, this, in, in fact, this quilt and some of the others in our collection have been used as the basis for reproductions oh. so that contemporary people can purchase them and that allows these pieces to not only live on for exhibition, but also to live on for modern usage. And for us to enjoy them and get right. to sew with them. Yes, fun. You, you enjoy them all over again. Yes. So Linda, how many pieces are in the collection? The collection here at Colonia Williamsburg has about 10,000 textiles, of oh. which about 200 of those are quilts. Wow. So we are very fortunate to have such a lovely collection. Let me show you a few other pieces in the collection. This is a really oh. rare piece. This oh. is an India chintz palampore. Uh, it's in a flowering tree motif. Some people today call it tree of life. Yes, in the I've period, heard that. It was called flowering tree. Uh, and it has hillocks that are a wonderful oh. sort of a textured looking textile. These uh, chintzes were made by painting on the surface. The mordant or the color fixative was painted, then the textile was dyed, and wherever the color fixative had been painted, that's where the color remains true. So this is handmade? Yes, each one of these lines and solids is painted on the surface by hand, and the design then is dyed after that process. Okay. And was this piece of fabric meant to be used as a full piece? Yes, this particular one is one large piece that would have been used as a bed cover. Okay. Uh, what, what they sometimes called a palampore. Oh, uh, the, the, that's what that means. Heard, yes. yes. Uh, it's a term that refers to an India chintz bed cover in a design similar to this. Mm -hmm. Exquisite. Now we have other India chintzes as well, and sometimes the colors are incredibly beautiful. Mm. This particular one hasn't turned yellow or brown over the years, so it has its original beautiful cream surface uh, in the ground textile. Huh. And do you think that the rest of the colors are true to what they were originally? I think the rest of the colors are quite uh, true to their original coloration uh, as it came from India for the Western market. 
Some of these floral motifs have been used as the basis of a line of quilting fabric reproductions. And I think quilters will really enjoy having those charming florals in the uh, fresh colors. Oh, absolutely. These were actually made for the textile trade. So they came here to America, they were sent to Europe and uh, England. Speaking of India chintzes, I'd like to show you some of the other printed textiles that we have in storage areas on the other side of the room. Oh, wonderful. Let's go. Follow me. <laughs> Smaller costumes and textiles are stored in these oh. study drawers. I'm giving you just a oh. small here. Of You're these a tease. Wonderful textiles. <laughs> oh, look at those. <gasps> this India chintz, for example, is really just a fragment of, of what it was originally. Oh, yeah. But the beautiful design is still there, even though it's been pieced. We we don't know why someone pieced it up. Uh, possibly it had been a dress that someone took apart to use maybe to make a quilt. Something flat, Something the way they flat, pieced it. Yes. Oh, it is beautiful. I'd love to make a quilt out of it. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, people, I think, or would. a dress, anything. It's yes. exquisite. It's about middle of the 18th century. Let me show you a few other things in the collection. We have some wonderful needlework tools down in the Oh, area. let's. <laughs> Here we have a collection of scissors and scissors cases. We have needle cases, oh. carved ivory, beautifully done. Absolutely. And for the thimble collectors. Oh, we have there are many. <laughs> and this is really just a little sampling of what we have in the collections at Colonia Williamsburg. Oh, Linda, thank you for this behind the scenes tour. I would call this building not a collection, but a treasure chest. Well, it really is. <laughs> and it was my pleasure to host you here today.